Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Call us on the Bet US Hotline 254 339 1122. Oklahoma linebacker, great. Also, the Rush, Sports Talk 1400, color analyst for Oklahoma football. And with Toby Rowland, and also with Gabe Eicher with Oklahoma, what was today like? I, I heard it was just insane. Uh, the introduction of Brent Venables, obviously Oklahoma Nation, been on pins and needles the last week. Yeah, the last 24 hours have been crazy. Uh, yesterday, it really started circulating that they'd make the decision on Brent Venables. They were flying out to pick him up in South Carolina. Everyone figured that out, figured out the uh, the flight plan to get back. And you had thousands of people flood the airport there in Norman with uh, signs and everything to, to welcome him here. And then today uh, they had the, uh, you know, the official ceremony where, where he was introduced as the next head coach. And a ton of former players there, media, obviously fans, uh, current current players this is a really good show um it's been awesome you know as soon as lincoln riley announced that that he was gone and he was going to usc you know instantly there was a bunch of people myself included started saying we need to do whatever we can to get Brent Venables back well and, and you have him uh, how important is it that it's somebody that understands oklahoma yeah oklahoma's it's unique it is it's it's a, a blue blood program. It's one of the you know top five or six programs in the country, but it's unique in the sense that most of your recruiting needs to come from outside of your state, so that requires a, a, a little bit different understanding of the lay of the land. Uh, we're also going to be transitioning to the SEC at some point in the future, so it's a really important hire and an important uh, important time for Oklahoma. So, Venables, uh, he understands the SEC, the lay of the land. He he was recruiting against those guys for the most part down there at Clemson, so he understands the resources needed and, and what it's going to take on the field. So I think it's just a great hire. Um, you know, Joe C., the athletic d- director, when Lincoln left and went to USC, it caught everyone by surprise, inc- including it sounds like the administration. And they didn't want that to happen again. They wanted someone where this job is going to be really important to them where this is a not a stepping stone but a destination job you got that in Venables. let me ask you this uh it has been since the lincoln riley story went down which was shocking it kind of shook college football oklahoma's been a part of a couple of those stories back in july of course with the sec and that story as well has it been probably as most uncomfortable week you can remember in oklahoma the fan base and, and around the football program in quite some time yeah, well, here's what's interesting. You know, when Lincoln Riley announced he was leaving for USC, I think there's 24 hours of not really panic, but so there's some anger there. People didn't understand why he would do that, especially after downplaying that he was leaving. Uh, actually, you know, just straight up saying that he wasn't leaving and then he's gone. And that quickly faded to excitement. Um, You know, there's some things about the program. Lincoln Riley did a really good job here. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you can't say you can't say a whole lot of negatives about what he did. But, you know, there's some things around the program that people have seen. Oklahoma's got a really smart fan base. They've seen a lot of good football in their day. And there's some things around the program that people just didn't like. Um, They didn't like the finesse nature of the team. And for the longest time, you know, you go back, however many areas you want to. It's been a team and a program based on physicality and toughness, and it felt like we had lost that. So people quickly turned to excitement with the the thought of, you know, maybe getting Venables back and getting back to some of those core principles that we've had as a program that feels like maybe they've been lost the last couple of years. Teddy Lehman, former Oklahoma linebacker and also the color analyst for OU football, among many shows that he does, including with one of our good friends as well, and I've been a part of their show with Gabe Eichert as well. Teddy, a lot of people want a sexy hire. A lot of people want the guy that's going to win the press conference. So I think sometimes people who don't know Brent Venables don't look at him that way. How do you look at him, and, and, and really how was he today? 
I, I, I think he's been great. Um, you know, what you see from Venables in front of the microphone or in front of a camera is going to be different from what you see at practice, in the meeting room, and on the sideline of a game. Um, you know, he is hes a very intense individual. He's a very demanding individual whenever it comes to coaching, his coaching style. But away from the field, he cares about his players. He cares, cares about the program, developing relationships. I think he's been great. Now, some people may not say nationally that it's a splash hire, but I'll tell you right now, no one around Oklahoma gives a rip what anyone thinks nationally about the hire. They got the guy that they wanted, and you can tell by the reaction from the fan base last night, today. The Sooner Nation is absolutely thrilled with the hire. They got their guy. How important is it now that you have the guy uh, that – Caleb Williams, who I heard went to a basketball game during the the, the week of delay, uh, the week of waiting, and you know they've lost a lot of people, you know commitments, whatever else. Some have entered a transfer portal. How do you think Venables will do in being able to regain some of that and stabilize what you have right now? Um, I, I think you're going to lose some guys naturally, and you'll probably gain some in the portal as well. I'll tell you, just like Lincoln Riley, and I think Kevin Williams is a really good young player, but I, me personally, I'm not concerned about it. Okay. Um, would I like to have Caleb Williams back as quarterback? Sure, I think so. But, um, you know, just like everyone has said, Bob Stoops, uh, Joe Castiglione, this program is bigger than any one individual, bigger than any one coach, any one player. We'll be just fine. Um, I don't know when we're going to announce – uh, any of the staff additions that, that Venables is going to make, but if if we get the target that they've been looking at for offensive coordinator, I think Caleb Williams will be more than happy to stay. Is that going to be former OU player and former Baylor assistant Jeff Levy? There's a lot of rumors uh, circulating that, that that's the top target, but here's the thing. Um, Oklahoma is you know we're we're in a good position. I think think he would like to come to Oklahoma, but get in line because every other school in the country wants him right now. Uh, some head coaching offers, tons of offensive coordinator offers. Ole Miss uh, would love to keep him there. So you're going to have to to make it make sense for it. But I believe that he would like the job if offered. All right, Ted, if you don't mind me to wrap it up with this, Baylor won the Big 12 championship. We've talked about them the week before they played Oklahoma. We know what they did that day against OU. We know that game was defense. I know at times sloppy because both teams played with unbelievable passion. Your thoughts about Dave Aranda and Baylor winning the Big 12 title? I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. What a football game. And defensively, to have that type of a goal line stand, I mean, that's what football's all about. He's done an awesome job there. Uh, I love the way that group plays. They're they're tough. They're physical uh, on both sides of the ball. That zone running game is just, it's brutal downhill. Um, it'll test your manhood on the other side. And defensively, led by that big anchor there in the middle, and a couple of really good backers, and Petrie, and all those guys flying around out there. It's fun to watch, man. I got a lot of respect for Dave Aranda and the job that he's done there. And I'll tell you, Baylor, since Matt Rule took over and Aranda now uh, running the show, it's been some tough, tough football teams down there. They play hard, physical football. And unfortunately, you know, it's one of those things. That's what we, we've been talking about here is, you know, whenever we've got Baylor – in Iowa State, in Oklahoma State, being the more physical team, talking about being the more physical team coming into the game and expecting to dominate the line of scrimmage, we got some problems going on at Oklahoma. That's why I say people are excited about the future right now because we think that there's a lot of ground that we can make up. And I'll tell you, uh, Coach Bittables is he's going <laughs> to – He's going to be very demanding of these guys. It's going to be a different atmosphere around Oklahoma. Former Oklahoma great uh, Teddy Lehman against Sports Talk 1400, OU football color analyst, huddle with Toby Rowland, and, of course, part of the Oklahoma breakdown with 
Gabe Eicher. Teddy, thanks for your time. Have a great day. I'm sure it's going to be lit up for you. Teddy Lehman on Sikkim 365 Radio, 365 Sports. All right, we're going to uh, come back here in a minute. We'll have also at 4 o'clock Angelique Shingala. She covers Michigan as they emphatically uh, validated who they are uh, into the college football playoff. Craig, you know a lot about Brent Venables. There's part of me that wonders – uh, and some places want the sexy hire. He's won three national titles. He's a big-time coordinator name at Clemson. He was at Oklahoma. What are your thoughts about uh, about uh, Brent Venables and the hire? Well, uh, given all the Oklahoma members of my family, uh, I can say for one, I think they're all just relieved that the coaching search is over. Uh, and I know my cousin Jamie in particular, an OU grad who lives in Norman. She lives like five minutes from campus. As a matter of fact, I go – sit in her backyards on Saturdays and can hear the crowd from her, her backyard and have done that a lot of times. But uh, they're thrilled uh, because they love Venables, uh, and I think that's kind of, a, of an overwhelming feeling around the fan base of just the, the obvious uh, connection that he has with the program because of his time there previously. Obviously knows the Big 12 really well. And, you know, Brent Venables kind of got, could have gone a couple different directions after he got sacked at Oklahoma. You know, they were right there on the precipice of winning a title, and it was like, there's just one thing missing, and what is it? And, oh, it's the defense. we got to change the – you know, the defense can't put us over the top. And, and so they made that move, and it turned out to be the best thing imaginable for Brent Venables because all he did was go off to Clemson and uh, become an even better coach and, and win big, big titles uh, in big games and, and play against big teams. And so – He's done everything that you could possibly do to deserve being a head coach at this stage. So he's definitely, uh, you know, earned the opportunity. Uh, I think Oklahoma had, you know, probably a lot of different options in front of them. I mean, that's a, that's a top 10 job, no doubt about it, uh, regardless of, of what people think of them going into the SEC and what that's going to do or, or anything else. I mean, it's Oklahoma at the end of the day. So you can win there. Bud did it. Bob did it. Barry did it. Lincoln did it. And, and there's no reason why Brent can't do it as well. So, uh, I'm, I'm curious, you know, obviously a first-time head coach, there's always going to be questions. You know, running a program is a lot different than being a dominant defensive coordinator. But, again, he's got so much experience. He knows the lay of the land. And, and I don't know how you could be any more prepared for it than, than he must be at this point. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see what he does. You know, obviously it's not a slam dunk that it's going to work out, you know, the way that it did with Lincoln Riley or even with Bob Stoops. But there's a good chance that it could. And, and I believe in Venables, and, and I believe it was a good hire. I don't know if it was the best hire that could have been made, but I also don't know what their options were. It might have been the best hire they could have made. We'll see, but uh, I like it. And, you know, the, the Big 12 coaching landscape is going to be very interesting next year with the, the turnover of Gary Patterson and, and obviously now the, the change at Oklahoma as well. And then a lot of guys stay in put that you maybe expected could be on their way out. So, um, yeah, excited to see them, you know, fill that job and, and, uh, and to see what Brand Venables can do. It's going to be interesting. There will still be some hits, and that's what Teddy Lehman mentioned. Today, Nick Bonito uh, uh, announced that he would forego the Alamo Bowl and get himself ready for the NFL draft. Obviously, there's decisions to make, and we did mention, I asked him about Jeff Levy, the offensive coordinator at Ole Miss. That affects Ole Miss. Yep. It affects Baylor in the Sugar Bowl against yep. Ole Miss in that offense that's explosive. It affects Oklahoma. It could affect the Big 12. could affect Baylor starting next year with Jeff Levy, who coached here and is the son-in-law of former Baylor coach Art Bryles. So there's yeah. a lot of like spider webs and angles of, uh, of what might happen if, in fact, he takes the job uh, as offensive coordinator. He played at Oklahoma as well, Jeff Levy. So there's a lot of – and that's still to be determined. We'll see. Kitley – 